guys, welcome to another vlog. So tomorrow is gonna to be a big day. We're actually doing more demolition, which I'll explain to you more tomorrow. Today, it's a bit more quiet on site because um, there's just some electrician work being done, deciding where light switches go. And we've also just picked up the tiles, which I'm so excited to show you guys as well. So yeah, we'll just give you guys a bit of an update. So this here, this is just temporary and shows yes. where the bench, like the kitchen bench will run all the way down here. I think that's plumbing for the sink, is it? Or dishwasher maybe, yeah, or both. So yeah, the kitchen bench will be here. And then this walkway, we were a little bit nervous if it was going yeah. to be too narrow because we've actually had to make this wall thicker for my recessed shelves. And also because the TV is on the other side, and there's a bit of cable management too. It was a little bit tricky to figure that out. Um, so we've ended up reducing the space just a little bit, but we think it's gonna be okay because keeping in mind this bench is a waterfall bench, there will be like flooring going a bit under it and stools will slip under. So you can imagine there's a little bit more space that way. And cause the kitchen's very light in color, um, hopefully it'll look more open. It's all coming together. And then we're also just talking about the lighting, where the lightings go. And we have Michael over here, who's an awesome electrician or Sparky. Do you know if you guys get called Sorry. Sparkies in other countries or just Australia? I'm sure, that might be Not sure. Yeah. And is there much to do with the TV wall cable wise? A little tricky? It's been a bit tricky, yeah. It's been a process to figure that out. Um, yeah. But I think I've got it. Yeah, yeah, we'll no longer have like the cable disaster that used to be behind our TV. It'll be tucked in hopefully between the brackets of the television and you won't be able to see it. <sighs> That'd be so nice. <laughs> the idea. With this cupboard, this is where we have internet network drives. It gets very hot in here in summer. So we have a little fan at the back, but it's still struggling a little bit to cool it down. We were thinking of putting a grate in the door. It might not be the prettiest thing, but at least it helps with the airflow. Oh yeah, the kitchen lighting. Michael is saying we're gonna do six. Six down. He's so good. He's even like, I'm gonna make sure they're in line with the other rooms. So they're all lined up. Everything's that's, gotta be in a line. Yeah. That's a good electrician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in Southeastern yeah. suburbs, very good electrician, I'm just saying. Thank you. <laughs> Another exciting thing is this um, paneling has arrived that will be put on the feature walls in the dining room and hallway, extended all the way down the hallway, which previously we did have some, but we weren't really happy with the finish. So it's great to have this redone. And it's a lot cheaper than the original one we got too. So you live and you learn. <laughs> so yeah, that should be really nice. And then you can see from the wood here, this is going to be a window in the corner. It's gonna match the height of this door. This door is also being replaced to be like a nice light wooden color because a lot of the kitchen is white. We really wanted to introduce some warm wood into the area to you know, make it less cold. So yeah, there'll be a big window here, almost floor to ceiling or at least to the floor. And then this big one is actually gonna be the kitchen window that will also act as a splashback. I know some of you guys are saying that you didn't like the idea of flashback being glass because of the dirt and the grease. But we know a few people who have window splashbacks and they've been fine with them. They're pretty easy to clean. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. This will be a little bit smaller just because I think they've actually marked it out here that the stone will maybe even go up to this point. Also, there's a bit of room for the cabinet thickness too. A bit, a bit smaller, a little bit more slim, but that's like a pretty good idea of what it's gonna look like. Here are our beautiful tiles. And this is one of the things I'm most excited about because I researched and picked these and I'm so glad that James also said he likes them. But they're a blend of different stones and it comes out with this really lovely variation in colors between the tiles. And one thing that you have to be careful of when you are tiling with inconsistent colors or variant colors is that the tiler knows to mix them up because sometimes they might just be laying tiles that are the same for a bit and then they're lighter for a portion and then you get like this blocky effect. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how these look. They'll be sealed because um, they will be in a wet area. So we'll probably do like a matte sheer seal. There'll be grout that we picked yesterday as well. Next up, we have to pick some grout color and the grout 
goes between the tiles and like helps stick them together. So these are our tiles that are going to be in the laundry area, in the buffet cupboard, as well as my feature shelves that are like recessed into the wall. So they're in a few places. They differ so much in colors between every tile. It ends up having a really nice kind of mismatched, but overall natural looking vibe. Leaning a little bit into brutalist, but hopefully a little softer than that because our house is clearly not very brutalist. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this is so cool. You can pick the grout colors and imagine it between them. And I think we'll do about two millimeters of grout. So it'll be thinner than this sample. Um, and we're not gonna go yellow. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking of doing um, a white and obviously I have to check this indoors because the outdoor lighting isn't the kind of lighting that it's gonna have. Um, but Probably the easiest idea would be to go the white. It was a difference between these. One is slightly darker, so this is kind of a more natural look. Well, maybe we should go that instead of the white white. I actually think that's the nicest. So it's the next day and the walls are coming down in the lounge room, which we weren't originally gonna do, but this looks like so much fun. Have a go at this. It's so much fun. <laughs> this one is that a stud? Yeah. Oh, that's a stud as well. <laughs> Where else can I do it? <laughs> I heard you got the wrong masks the other day. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. It's really easy. Look at all those cobwebs. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this room is because we decided to do something a little bit crazy. We decided to extend the renovation. Remember there was a bulkhead or an archway it used to be curved? Well, I decided that it would be really nice if there was no archway. There was something to do with like the ceiling bowing and then the ceiling would look weird. We have to redo this ceiling and it's a great opportunity to actually insulate the walls because as you can see, there's no insulation here, only in the ceiling and the ceiling insulation is pretty old. So we kind of thought, when else are we going to have an opportunity to do this? We may as well just do it. Renovation got a little bit bigger than expected and I always hear that people just keep adding on to renovations. And I thought, no, we won't do that, but here we are doing another room. So they have to cut into the ceiling so it comes down in sections rather than the whole ceiling collapsing. So they're just doing a few cuts up there before it comes down. And I've been told that it's probably good not to be here when it all comes down because it's pretty messy. Okay, so I'm just standing outside while they take the ceiling down and I am so glad they're wearing masks because this would be really terrible to inhale. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that because there's reflections in the windows, but the ceiling's just coming down. <laughs> oh, I see. So someone's actually off in the roof and then they just, they just kind of drop them down. That's the insulation that we had. So, oh, there goes another one. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so this definitely wasn't keeping us very um, warm in the winter. Oh, there goes another one, or um, cool in the summer. So I'm actually really glad that we're redoing all of this. So another news while they're doing that, um, it was, the dust was starting to come out the front door, so I thought it's my time to uh, move, move along. I have been coming back to the garden just to pick lettuce, and the garden's kind of growing like crazy as well, so. so. Yeah, I'm just gonna be a rabbit and grab a few of my leaves. 
I love growing lettuce. That's my favorite thing to grow because it tastes so much better than buying it from the supermarket when you have it almost straight off the plant. So the way you just harvest the lettuce, or at least what I do, I'm not a pro gardener by any means, but I just get a few of the outer leaves. You just kind of bend them off the bottom and you don't want to stress out the plant. So you only take about a quarter or a third. And then I also like to pick rhubarb sometimes. Rhubarb is really easy to grow. Well, at least in Australia, it's really easy to grow. And basically the big leaves you don't eat because they're technically toxic. They might give you a tummy ache, I guess, if you ate too many of them. But the stems are gorgeous and I actually eat them stewed usually with a bit of like maple syrup or stevia or you can obviously use good old sugar, cut them up like a carrot stick and you just dip it in sugar and then eat it. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta try that. If you've never tried uh, rhubarb, I really recommend it. And similar to the lettuce, they just kind of peel off, oopsies, from uh, the stems. And yeah, they can be pretty aggressive in the garden bed. So you just have to be careful that they don't overtake from all the other plants. But I find if I pick them regularly, they are pretty good they mind their own business if they have enough room whoa so i've just washed this and i'm gonna just try it raw because you guys recommended it <laughs> okay it definitely needs sugar i recommend stewing it because it's it's pretty sour at least mine is i don't know maybe from a different harvest it's um tastier although it's kind of refreshing Maybe I kind of like it. Not too bad. My little basket. I feel like I'm in Peter Rabbit. Did you guys ever watch Peter Rabbit, the original cartoon? That was a banger of a kid's TV show. How cute is that? All right, so just like that, the whole ceiling was gone. So this is why we have all of this plastic all over the doors because when you do stuff like that the dust will get under the doors and go into your other rooms and I just realized tiling was taken out so I don't know when they did that they must have done that this morning oh oh my god and the stone top Ooh, exciting I'm just heading off to get my brows done today um, I always am so interested in what other people do for their beauty routines so I was like oh maybe I'll share it with you guys um, so I'm going to go to my brow lady who's really good. I usually go every six weeks, I think, to get them updated. Uh, running a little bit late, so we better go. Hey guys, so it's the next um, morning. Well, actually it's a, f a few mornings later and we've almost finished with all the, would you say the structure work before plastering? Yeah, you have to have an inspector come or a surveyor in Australia to check. I don't know that you guys have done it right. Yep. Yeah, so this is maybe the last time you guys will see everything open. I wish um, I got to smash more stuff. <laughs> I wish I did more of that at the time. So we've got Shannon over here. <laughs> uh, what are you doing, Shannon? I'm trying to install this steel column to hold the roof. And why do we need that? Um, because we've removed walls that are loading to kind of open up the space, I guess. So the ceiling doesn't collapse. Yeah. So this steel column is going to pick up what the walls used to pick up. Nice. Okay, and then there's Joe over here. And you said it's not scary when the surveyor comes. No, nah, not at all. He's just making sure that we do everything yeah. correctly to the engineer's specs and yeah. Yeah. So, as long as you've done everything right, there's no dramas. Because originally you guys 
weren't sure if we really needed like a steel post in here. You guys wanted to do wooden. There's different ways to do things. It just depends on the engineer. Yeah. So, yeah, it's up to them at the end of the day. So we contacted them. They wanted the steel, so. Yeah. We do the steel. And then they poured concrete down here last night. So that's like in the ground. I feel a little silly because I thought that you had to like set the pole in the concrete. <laughs> But um, yeah, like set it around it, but oh, okay. So it's not that, it's not silly to think that. Oh, there you go. The blue one gets, um, I guess, drilled into it. Yep, bolted down. Bolted down. So I guess if there's a natural disaster, everything will fall down except for that steel post probably. <laughs> and we'll just be left with that. Oh, this is really exciting. So I guess the painter painted this window. Well not in a color but in a stain and this is really cool because this is the first time we'll see what it looks like to have wooden windows with our new painted house because there was a storm or a lot of winds we think the window to our garage fell out then and it literally just fell out of the top and was sitting out a little bit so we were actually get to see what the nice wood looks like here it, it looks really bland, especially on an overcast day. Yeah, I think when we actually have warm wood around the house with the white, it'll be very nice one day. And it's very weird weather today. It's like warm, but cold. It's humid, really weird weather. And then they've done the white trims, which we did lighter than the walls. James was thinking we should have gone a bit lighter. So it's more of a contrast, but I think we made the right decision. And then the other cool thing, I'm not sure if I filled you guys in on this, but um, the aircon units are gonna be like stacked over this side, then the clothesline is gonna be moved across. And then this fence will be a nice like stained wood, like the window, and we'll hide them because they're gonna build around the aircon units so they're not on display. And again, that's gonna add more warmth, which will be really nice. Also, I just noticed these are blueberries growing and soon you see all of these little things they're gonna turn into blueberries how cool is that and probably the birds will eat them before we get to pick them because animals i don't know how they do it but they always get to them right before you're ready to eat the fruit so we realized there was a bit of a leak in the roof last night i think where the solar panels, where one of the cables are. They've put silicon to seal it, but hasn't fully sealed it. So those are being sealed up, but then they also saw there's some broken roof tiles because this house was built in the 70s or 80s. The roof tiles, a little bit harder to source. But then this one was under the house. So we were able to see the number, 100, and we know the brand is called Monier. We should be able to get another one of these. Well, more than one, probably like, 10 because it's always good to have spares. Well, I suppose it's kind of strange for you guys in other countries hearing that our tiles are not actually nailed or sealed down. They actually just sit loose on top of each other, I think. I'm just like, why aren't they like nailed down or something? I feel like they'll just blow off. But apparently in Australia, that's often not done here. But in America, I think you guys have them nailed down. I guess because we don't get um, like cyclones and tornadoes. We're not in a snow region, so you don't really need it. All right, so here we have Nick from Elevate Joinery and he's doing our kitchen fit out. So today you're just measuring. Yeah, final measure. So almost ready for going on the machine. And yes, yeah, which pretty exciting. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys because you guys have like a massive laser cutter. Yeah, CNC that... machines. With router bits, everything will get cut and mapped out. and. Yeah. So I'll try and film it for you guys because I want to see it. It's really interesting. So then you just do the designs on the computer and then... Yep. Just... Yeah, 3D, everything's optimised and set from the computer out to the machine and yeah, uh, it does all the hard work, not us anymore. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, we were just going through a few things but um, it all looks pretty good and apparently it only takes three days to put most of the kitchen in and then we have a break while the stone bench is cut perfect yes yeah, spot on and yep. then it will be put in and then the rest of the appliances can be fit off for that. yep after the stone yep yeah i'm getting really excited now it's all happening <laughs> oh and also i forgot to tell you guys that the builders are from the builders project if you guys need kitchen 
or builders. If you live in Melbourne, you know who to go to. We're lucky it's raining today because we've been able to spot some leaks in the roof. Hopefully the leaks are minimal and just a bit of silicon from underneath the roof tiles that can fix it. Um, otherwise, because we have solar panels, you'd have to have all the solar panels taken off with, I mean, can be done, but at a cost. So that's kind of the first little unexpected thing that we've run into, but luckily it's raining today. Otherwise we wouldn't have had any idea. So next week there'll be plastering done. So it'll actually start looking like a house again. So plastering done and then insulation, which will be awesome. And we're actually having some of the back of the house, the old insulation will be like sucked out so they can put new ceiling insulation in because you guys have seen the state of what our insulation is right now. I never know whether to say insulation or insulation. 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 I don't know. Anyway guys, I'm going to finish this up here. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you want to see next. Uh, if you have any questions or questions to ask the tradies. As always, I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll speak to you all soon. Tack tack. <laughs>